George and I are headed back to Otter Creek, except we got a little bit of a problem. She's all the way across the hall from me. Hello? What won't be a problem is all the craziness that's gonna be revealed in this upcoming town hall meeting. Yeah, more plot twist. I mean, hot potato, or maybe it's a golden key. Who knows with these crazy people? How's it feel being back home? I mean, that's the only reason why I came to Florida is to see the baby ducklings. We have baby ducks. They're not even baby ducklings anymore. I they look like teenagers. Thought we came to Florida. Hi, baby. For hi, a big G right there. I thought we came to Florida for the town hall meeting. Well, you came to Florida for the town hall meeting. I came for the baby. Lynette saying there's big, huge, mind-blowing plot twist coming our way. Do you, do, you, do you bring enough bail money for me? Mm -hmm. Okay. I think so. Just in case I need it. I think so. Okay. If not, then right. I'm going to have to call the, the mayor back up in Ohio. Okay, yeah. Well, Mayor Dan, we may need you <laughs> down here in Florida. Okay. So, are you going in or what? Yes. Now, you don't know the new system. She, just, she hasn't been here since the end of April. She has not been here since the end of April. Look at those little baby duckies. All right, let's. Oh, I see you the G. still I have. The G. I pointed out the G. She didn't see it. Now she sees it. Look Hi. at the baby ducks. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. Oh, they're making such a weird noise. Those are duck noises. Those aren't babies no more, are there? Hi, baby. Did you know I saved one of their lives? Yeah, I watched that video. Yeah, yeah I did. I saved one of their lives. But, um,. This video, you know which one it was? this video is not about baby ducks. This video is about Otter Creek. Oh my goodness, look how cute and flappy. Do you want to fly back home They're now so that you fluffy. saw them? No, I want to spend, I want to spend a couple hours with them if that's okay. Um, that works for me because I got to spend a couple hours getting you all up to speed on Otter Creek. Town Hall, it's going to be a good one. Everyone wants to know, is Don the Con going to be legally allowed to stay on the town council? The bills and the paper. Everybody wants to know, including us. And we finally have heard back from the local investigators of what's going to happen with Don the Con. We're going to share that with you, but one of the biggest things that's going to happen in this meeting is they've got to determine who's going to get the one-year seat. Keep in mind... <laughs> Most of this year is almost up, like a quarter, if not a third of the year is already gone because Russell had the actual town hall shut down, so that was two months. Then you had two months after that, we've had two meetings. There's four months. There's, there is literally a quarter of the year already gone. There's three-fourths of the year left. So the issue is Don the Khan, who has spent his majority of his tenure on the council fighting Russell, all of a sudden wants Russell. He doesn't want Russell to have this one-year term. He wants Russell to have a two-year term. Now, why would you fight pins and needles, tooth and nail, with Russell the entire time to the point where Russell and Mary actually tried to keep Don the Con out of special meetings? That's illegal. And we've already heard in previous meetings there's proof of that in these 6,000 emails. But now Don the Con wants Russell to stick around for a little bit longer. Don's going off in nine months. Somebody else is coming on in April. Hopefully it's Carl. Carl already told Don, I'm coming for your seat. So you got to continue to ask, why, why, why Don, why? Uh, is it because Russell knows something about Don that nobody else knows? Why does Russell want to stay on? So bad he wants to stay on now. He knows there's tremendous amount of opposition against him to the point where he's finally learned in his 70 plus years on this earth, keep your mouth shut. Don't say stupid things. Don't antagonize the people that you actually were voted in to serve by saying, sue us. How foolish can you be, right? But now somebody's giving him some good counsel. Keep that mouth shut. Don't say anything. And he finally is taking it for the first time probably ever in his life. And if we look back a few meetings, the town lawyer, Worm, wait, there's been 
it's five months so far since a April, May. So they were voted in April. They would have went in in April, May, June, July. What are we in now? August? Mm -hmm. Okay, four months. Four months. Although April would have counted, so five months. Month of April, I think. Maybe I'm doing Mary math. We need money. How much are we going to get? Mary, Mary. Math is scary. Starts to rub off on you if you're in this otter town too long. So Don wants Russell to stay in, but doesn't want to work with Russell. Now he wants to work with Russell. He's on board. Why would Russell want to stay in? Russell's only voting with the majority because he knows he's a lame duck. If he goes against anything, he just looks like a fool. So what's the entire point? Why does Russell want to stay in? Why does Don want to stay in? What have they done that has benefited this town? The town is trashed. The town has done nothing about, well, I don't know, the, the actual individuals like Don's property, Russell's property. We've looked back at a meeting at 2013 where the council and his own daughter, Russell's own daughter, is calling him out on being the trash of the town. So um, where does that put us with this one-year term? Well, we do know that the lawyer a couple months back said, well, oh, when Russell didn't show, if Russell doesn't show, then it's okay, just go ahead, appoint it. Russell shows up, all of a sudden the lawyer has a whole new tune and says, well, there is no state statute, there's no defining law, uh, this is new territory, you better get some further help. So, mayor says, I'm gonna call the state attorney, I'm gonna talk to somebody. It's gonna be extremely interesting to see what actually happens with this one year term and who gets it. Now, who do the town? What is the town? Who does the town want to have it? I think that's that's more than common knowledge at this point, right? I mean, we would all agree. Uh, except Lynette, John Crook, they're Russell's biggest fans now. Biggest fans. They move into Otter Creek because they stalk us to Otter Creek. Then they set up signs illegally on their property at 4 by 8 sheet. Uh, which, by the way, we just passed. And take a look. We just drove past their property. Piles upon piles of garbage. Concrete blocks. Oh, oh, there's the donation box. You know, they're not open, but you can always submit a donation. And what do you know? We got windows. And we got French doors on the other side. The poorest planned home or a shell barn than you've ever seen. Look at that, you got French doors that go straight out to a French septic. That is the most foolish design I think I've ever seen. There ain't nothing done inside, it still ain't a house. Those two have literally destroyed turtles for us forever, George, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's, I don't think we're ever going back to being turtle lovers. We definitely aren't uh, turd old purgatory lovers, that's for sure, and the things that are going on there, which, uh, remember, Lynette's greatest, biggest fan and, and family member who isn't even family because all of her family has alienated her, was Jamie Starr, otherwise known as Jamster. But then she invites Jamster to her property, all the while on her Facebook page is saying that I'm the one that invited Jamster. Now let's be very clear. Uh, Jamster and Lynette already had this plan for them to come together. Then Jamster reaches out to me through Facebook Messenger and says, hey, I'm coming up, what's going on? Now we've already shown all these screenshots. There's no point in showing them again. You've seen them, you can go through a playlist, you can see it all. The point is this, Lynette literally cannot stop lying. And nothing happens on that property unless we do something about it. So when all of a sudden the piles of garbage and there's a freezer that is a death trap, when she's going on and on, Jeremy's gonna hit my kid, he's doing 70 down the road, and yet there's 1,001 death traps on her little piece of tiny property which is in itself a death trap, and she's worried about somebody driving by her place. I mean, talk about talking about the speck in somebody else's eye and not seeing the pole in your own. So we talk about the, the freezer. 
now it's gone. Immediately, we report it to Children's Services, and then all of a sudden, she's finally looking for a scrapper. Uh, we talk about all of the garbage, and then, oh, now it's going to the dump, not being tossed on the side of the road. We talk about the tremendous, horrible upkeep of the yard, and multiple agencies are being called out and giving her deadlines when things have to be cared for and upkept. And all of a sudden, people are out there mowing and actually out there weed eating. Uh, we talk about, oh, I don't know, it's, it's a shell thing. She talks about it's a shell thing as a business, her nonprofit, which online says is always open, but then she states it's never open, even though it's always open if you want to drop off donations at the end of the drive. But it's never been open. It's not a nonprofit for the public. My goodness, can this woman go back and forth anymore? Yes, I believe she can. We've talked about the shell thing, saying that they put up this barn, and that's what it is. It's a barn shell. And all of the sudden, they have windows and doors. Now, these windows and doors have been in for a little bit longer than just today, as we pass by. We have pictures of it well before then. But here's the funny thing. Still not a home. You still don't have an occupancy permit. You still can't move a child over there who has life-threatening diseases, especially if you're disabled and your life is threatened. You can't live in a barn with windows and doors. So what's going to happen with them? Well, they're breaking pretty much any and every law you can on that property. So the issue is somebody's going to have to be put in a position to enforce it. And as of today... Nobody's done anything yet. County hasn't, town hasn't. That doesn't mean it's not going to happen. Something's going to happen. These people cannot continue to live on this property illegally. And it blows our minds. George, how much is your mind blown that children's services are going, okay, you got electric and you got AC in a shed, even though it's illegal in the state of Florida. Oh, go ahead. It is, it is mind-boggling how... CPS, according to her, is okay with her living in a shed with a child that's sick and John Crook living in the camper in luxury. It, it just makes zero sense. Not to mention the shed does not have a kitchen, does not have a bathroom, does not have plumbing. It has electricity, maybe, questionable AC, maybe, and then there's a compost toilet five feet away oh from the shed. Oh my goodness. Oh, yeah, well, that's probably where all the turtle the turtle turds go which in the winters it, it is a freezing. turd it is a turd winters party and party. springs here are freezing the so is, is the child going to use the restroom out in the freezing cold point is this how in the world could cps or whatever it's called in florida d what is it d something d you know i don't know you're more up to speed on these things. Whatever it is, Children's Services in Florida. DHS, CPS. All right, CPS, DHS. How in the world, DHS, how in the world could you come into a piece of property with a child that supposedly has life-threatening diseases, uh, life-threatening conditions, which, listen, I know she doesn't have a life-threatening condition. That's just another lie that Lynette and John Crook use to scam people. And, and you're going to be okay with a law being broken. Why isn't DHS immediately calling the sheriff for the town and saying you got people illegally living in a in a shed on the property it is not a tiny home it's a shed it's not a tiny home it's a shed there's no occupancy permit for the shed there's no occupancy permit for the barn even though it may have windows and doors in it listen let's 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 get to reality okay i'm the greatest thing that's ever happened to this people on this piece of property because without me shedding light on it nothing would have ever happened it would still be as trashy as it was before. Is it a little better? Little. There would not be windows and doors in if I never brought light to all of this. Never. Nothing would have ever happened unless I brought attention to it. So really, let's face it. As much as Lynette and John Crook say that they hate me, their life is better because of me. And so is Harley's. As much as we don't have time for stupid people, yeah, we brought that sign from Hale's headquarters from a storage unit, and it's getting hung up down here. As much as we don't have time for stupid people, uh, they're like, why are you even giving this attention? Do you understand this may actually save a three-year-old's life? So, so would you not give attention to something and this much attention if you knew you could save somebody's life? 
an innocent three-year-old. Yeah, that's the goal. That's the attempt is to save somebody's life. And frankly, we feel like we may even save some of the townspeople's life. Because remember, guns a firing and a blazing from meth heads living on the property. Her best friend ever, who then went on to post this in an anti linet group, which there are plenty of them on Facebook. Let me just read it for you. Jamie Starr Johnson said this. They messaged me. They meaning Lynette and John Crook. Too bad she didn't use that instead of they. But I'm pretty sure she's probably at that point. They messaged me one day to look in the driveway for John Crooks. She did say Crook. Look, right there. See? Crooks. It says Crooks. She didn't say John, but she said Crooks. So we, we did get a Crooks out of her. They messaged me one day to look in the driveway for John Crooks' gun. I'm saying she, she misspelled. She put for me Crooks' gun case. So she meant John, but it came up me. Hey, her grammar and spelling and punctuation is way better than Lynette's. They messaged me one day to look in the driveway for John Crooks' gun because they couldn't find it. All right, it was under the seat, she said. Really? She's one that has threatened Lynette. Jamie is now talking about Lynette. She is one that has threatened to shoot the animals and even one day was gonna sh going to snap the poor little wiener dog, Tilly, you understand that it's going to snap, snap the neck of Tilly, that they have chasing the guinea hens. The guinea hens who were killing her roosters killed four of them in total. And when she got a hold of that dog, I was worried she would snap the neck. I told her, calm down, stop screaming. Look, screaming is all in capital letters. This is a very abusive person. Very, very abusive person. But she doesn't, she doesn't scream around Harley. And remember, she has to be around Harley 24-7. She doesn't scream. She does, she's, not, she's not abusive around Harley, but she's never not with Harley, which leads you to ask the question, if Lina actually shows up at this meeting, which she's supposed to, with her new best buddy who's just as freaking insane, Sharon, um, who's watching Harley? Is it the abuser, John Crook? Because Lina says she can't leave this child, child with anybody. I told her to calm down and stop screaming, and she was not going to hurt that sweet dog. And, oh, I almost forgot. The chicken that died because it was trampled in the coop under a wood pallet. No idea what that means. You try and figure out these insane people. I don't understand it. My mind doesn't work the way their minds work. I, I know how to complete a sentence. I know how to use punctuation. I know grammar. And uh, so, really, they aren't responsible with their firearms at all. Sad, sad, sad. Yeah, it is sad. Who knows when Sharon comes on the property? Number one, is she going to be brave enough to stay with the abuser, John Crook? Number two, is she going to witness all the abuse and do absolutely nothing about it? Number three, what's Otter Creek going to do with another freak in the streets? The town hall meeting isn't the only thing we flew back for. I gotta pay my water bills. And as you take a look here, here's my water bill for the schoolhouse, okay? And now people right now are going, Jeremy, you gave out your address, ah! You do realize we've already given out the address to the schoolhouse to everyone for a dollar sale, and we're gonna continue to do dollar sales for the people in the community. Not a big deal. What is it at? It is at $24, okay? I like that, I like that a lot. Wait, shouldn't it be commercial? Since it's a school? Well, that is a good question. Are you looking somewhere where it says residential? Right there. So. Odd. Odd that Mary never billed the Lark as commercial. It's always been in the system as residential. As a matter of fact, there was not one single other place in the system that was marked as commercial except for me. That's it. It was me. Now, what has the new administration done? Let's take a peek here. Here's 310 North Otter Creek Avenue. And people right now are going, Jeremy, no! You're letting people know where you live! I'm pretty sure the entire world has figured it out where Otter Creek is now. Not a big deal, okay? We got cameras everywhere, we've got security. Not a big deal. Here's what I want you to see. What did they do? They changed it to residential. residential. Whereas before, we were the only commercial account in Otter Creek. There was only one 
it was us on a residential piece of property that's always been zoned residential and probably always will be zoned residential. Unless the state comes in, offers us a few million dollars and say, hey, we got a toll road coming through and we want to use your property. Well then, hey, we'll take the check. We'll go move over next to, you want to go to Bronson? I hear there's a Marli Huge over there that needs a new neighbor. I heard there's an awesome turtle rescue there. Oh, that maybe, maybe Lynette and John Crook are going to move in with Marli Huge. Oh, geez. That'd be a mess, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. For the question that everybody wants to know the answer on, Don the Con, will he still be on the town council? Remember, when you commit an act, a criminal act, it's either criminal or civil, okay, as far as the court system. So what Don did, he was arrested for a criminal act, and it was a felony. Regardless of what it was, it, it truly doesn't matter what it was. So right now, some of you are going, okay, well, you just got you just got theft by deception from Gary Allen on a storage unit. Yep, we did. And that's a felony. It sure is. He gave you your money back. Doesn't matter. It's still a felony. You can still be convicted of it. Doesn't matter what you think is, oh, that's no big deal. It matters what the law says, period, for everybody. So if you go, well, what he did, who cares? Well, the law obviously does, or it wouldn't have been an issue. Yes, he got arrested for it. And if he has a felony, no, he cannot serve on the town council of Otter Creek. But the final investigation has said this. Mr. Jeremy, thank you for your email concerning Mr. Severino. Our office, just make sure you're getting all of this, okay? Our office has diligently researched along with the assistance of the Levy County Clerk of Court. And upon our findings, Mr. Severino had adju adjunction. Ad Why can't I ever say that word? You can't say Massachusetts, and I can't say <laughs> adjudic adjudication. Adjudication. Ad you know what I'm trying to say. Yes, yes, All right. I do. All right. So withheld. So basically uh, withheld for all of the charges regarding his arrest. Research from the Broward County Clerk of Courts shows that he entered a plea on March 14th, 1983. He served probation, so he did get probation, up to this date until March 14th, 1985. So he was on probation for a couple of years. 1987 date you're referring to is the date that his court documents were filed into the Comprehensive Case Information System, otherwise known as CCIS. So we thought we saw charges from 82 and 87. It was just 82. He entered a plea bargain in, in 80, 83. He got probation for two years. And prior to 87, the Broward County Clerk of Courts may not have utilized this software. For example, Levy County Clerk of Courts didn't upload any content documentation digitally until the 1980s. And we've provided you with documentation from the Broward County Clerk of Courts public website. We hope this will answer all your questions and concerns. So they actually have right here they have attachments for me in regards to Don. So they did take this very, very seriously and they researched it to the utmost that they could with multiple members. And what they found is yes, he was arrested for a felony. No, he was not charged with the felony because he took the plea deal. He was on probation for two years. Therefore, Don Ashley can still serve on the town council. Unfortunately, because we honestly don't know what his function is other than to argue. There's no doubt tonight's town hall meeting is going to be another monumental moment for Otter Creek. This is a town of 100 people. A town of 100 people that can't afford what the town legally has to provide. There's just no way. They have more expenses that are coming after the interlocal agreement ends, which is September. They have to provide all of these services that the county has been providing with the interlocal agreement. They can't afford it. The only way to the only way to do it is to charge every single individual of the town. So you have people in the town right now, well, you have Lynette and John Crook in the town right now going, it's a conspiracy. Jeremy wants to unincorporate. Uh, yeah, okay. And so now they want to stay incorporated. Okay, when they get an additional $10,000 tax because the town can't afford all these services that the town has to provide after September, I wonder if they're still going to be crying, oh, we needed to stay 
Incorporated. Nope, there's going to be, I'm a victim. And here's what George and I really want to know. Why do these people continue to pick on middle-aged interracial couples? We, we just can't wrap our head around it. Why do these individuals try to terrorize and, and they're bullies? They keep bullying us. We're scared to live in our own property because they're bullies.